Dan, would you like to join my drive club? It, it, how much does this cost to, to get in on there? I have no idea. No? Uh, There's a series of questions I'm going to have to ask you to determine the cost. Okay. Are you a PlayStation Plus subscriber? I, I am, yes. Okay, then it might be free. I don't know. Oh, well, I mean, if it's free, I don't see why not. It's... This is Drive Club. It is coming out. They are going to sell it on disc. They are going to sell it as a download. Uh, that much I know is that they're going to be selling it as a, as a full price release, and there's some form of the game that will come as a PlayStation Plus thing. Remember, like it, it was like a year ago this game was supposed to come out at like launch. Yeah, it got pushed off. It's finally out here, October. Yeah, because damn near a year, a year, a year later. Um, they had to sub in like contrast or something yeah, since Drive Club and, was supposed and, to be the first month of Plus stuff. Yeah, so been pushed way out, but it is here, and, and PlayStation Plus members will still get some sort of thing. I'm, I'm not 100% clear on what that is, but <laughs> it is a product that they are selling as well. Okay. Uh, and and this is it. We have it on disc. I put the disc into the PlayStation. It is a driving game. <laughs> you can join clubs. Okay. So right out of the gate, they have nailed it and in I, terms of the name representing what happens here. And I can presumably drive cars and join clubs for free if I have PlayStation Plus. That's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say one thing or the other on that because I, I actually don't know what the PlayStation Plus side of this is. Seems like their messaging has been crystal clear uh, so far on this. If you if you are a PlayStation Plus member and you want to buy the full game, it's ten dollars cheaper. Okay. So there's that. But if it's but if the bulk of it's free and all you're really getting is the tour mode, that's expensive for for what you get in the tour mode. Okay. Um, so there are a handful of things you can do. You know, it, it, it's they're they're trying to position this as like a social racer, which means it's kind of full of leaderboards. Like every other driving game is now, uh, they've they've done some stuff to to make that stuff a little, a little more in your face uh, than it is in in some other games. But why don't we just get in and, and we'll drive here? Uh, the tour is kind of a, a set of structured events. They give you these posters that kind of give you some indication of, of what you're going to be doing, and you earn stars in the tour to unlock uh, additional parts of the tour. So you see here, I've not crossed the 104 star line yet, right? So I can't get in here. And to get the, the next uh, big cup, the Pro Cup, I'll need 122 stars, and so on and so forth. Are, are a lot of these, you know, like, hey, only this kind of car can be in this race? Or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you end up in, in you know, the, the tracks are set, all that sort of stuff. There are drift events, there are time trials, um, and there are races. So let's go back to one of these early events here, and, I don't know, let's try this one. I, I'm missing a star in this one, maybe I can get it. Oh, so it's just a, this is just a time trial. So maybe that actually will be, will be a little bit boring. Are they more varied? Um, uh, you know, as far as the star requirements, you know, like different. Yeah, it's so not always just time. It's right? not always just time. Okay. So here, it's oh. the, there's a cornering face-off. You want to get at least 105 miles an hour, and you want to finish in the top three. That's cool uh, for your for your three stars. Um, and here's here's a race that we only have one star in. So I finished in the top three, but I did not uh, I did not complete the drift face-off, and my lap time was not 140. But you beat Phil Kohler, which is really all that matters. Exactly. Yeah. So, let's look at these hot hatches. <laughs> is that a term for a type of car? These are hot hatches. Is that, what? Look at these what, hot hatches. What's a hatch? Like, what is a hatch car? Like a hatchback. What's that mean? It's a hatchback. Like, the it's a hatchback car that has the open hatch in the back. So, like, the, the window thing that opens yeah. up? So, like, okay... So, like, SUVs are like that, too, right? But that's an SUV. Oh, boy. I don't know much about cars, Jeff. All right, that's a hatchback. <laughs> see that? That's a hatchback. See how the back can open up there? They're like a trunk. Hatchback. No, because you see it, it's inside the, the compartment of the car. It's not the trunk. It's not a separate compartment. It yeah. is a hatch. It's not, it is not a trunk. It is a hatch you... <laughs> that you can get access to the, the an area in the back of the car. Okay. You must watch a lot of Top Gear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I actually think hot hatch is a term that is used overseas. I, I, oh, okay. I, I, it is a disgusting term. It just sounds gross. <laughs> uh, Forza uses it as well, so it's it's a commonly accepted term, I guess. But okay. Um, so we have access to these cars, these hot hatches. Uh, let's go with this hot hatch. You're saying hot hatch a lot. A hot hatch. <laughs> and uh, we, can, we can pick from these custom paint schemes. Can we, we get can... like a scary shark face on the front of it? Uh, no. That's my favorite no, paint you scheme. You don't really. I mean. You, the, you can design your club icon. I put that snake from the, that weird flag so in on it. So don't tread on me. Yeah. yeah. Um, or you can go to factory, which is just one color. There's no... You don't choose a color beyond that. Okay. Which is something Ooh. of a theme with Drive Club, where it does not have the level of options you expect from a modern driving game. Okay. Kind of across the board. 
Really? Your one gameplay option is do you want to use manual transmission? So not a whole lot of customization or no. any, really? No. You can you can customize the club paint job using a, a set of kind of pre-configured um, paint jobs that you unlock, and you can choose what you want your club paint job to be. Uh, but that's that's a, kind of about it. Okay. Um, and there's no setting for just like, you know, level of assistance or drive. It, 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 this is not a driving simulation, I guess, is, is kind of the, gotcha. the, the, the thing to say here. So... Does it feel like once you know tires on the road? Does it feel uh, more sim-like or more kind of arcadey? No, it's it's neither. Uh, it's this weird thing in the middle where uh, it doesn't feel like a simulation, like a Gran Turismo style of game. Okay. Uh, and doesn't have the options that you would expect a game like that to have. Uh, but it does have a few things that a game like that might have. And then th the action is not like loose and fast enough for it to be anywhere near arcadey. Right. Uh, so it's just kind of this, it comes up most of the way to the line on the sim thing, but then for whatever reason, they made the cars a lot grippier than a real car would be. And kind of say, so here's my drift objective. Uh, so this, this is a face-off. And, and this one is just against the, the game, but by and large, those face-offs pop up as part of the socially kind of like connected thing of like, you're going to see some other dude's face there, and, and he's going to... Okay. You're going to race against him, and it's usually... I mean, in my experience, it's not one of your friends. I don't know if, if that's because the game's not out yet or hmm. what, but that's uh, that's how it's been so far. Um, they've made the cars grippy, and, and the... You know, they, they sometimes developers send along, you know, a little uh, a cover letter with the game when they send it out for review, and and they kind of in this one they say like, we decided to be really grippy, so if you just want to fly into a corner, hit the brakes at the last second, you can totally do that. And I, that that's not a, an exact quote, I guess, but that's more <laughs> or less what they say. And I like I'd I'd played a lot of Drive Club and couldn't quite put my finger on what it was that just didn't nothing about it felt right to me. And I was just like, what, what are they going for here? What are they trying to do? And so to read that that was like a deliberate choice, or, or at least that's how they're positioning it, is really crazy to me. That's uh, confusing, because is that more fun? I mean, I think part of racing games is like approaching curves in smart ways. And, you know, like, so is this one you just full speed ahead, hit the brakes, do a turn, keep uh, going? It's not or? quite that, you know, you, you, it's not quite that forgiving. Um, but, yeah, it, it doesn't feel, so that, as a result, this game doesn't feel realistic at all. Okay. Um, and, and it doesn't feel... It's not, like, fun enough to be an arcade style game. Okay. Basically. So it's that kind of classic case of them straddling the line and... and well, I, it may, I guess it's not that classic case because they don't go in an arcade direction at all. It's like they did that and then, you know, they, they kind of say, like, oh, you, you know, you can, you can drift, just hit the e-brake and hope for the best. <laughs> or, or, well, okay, again, that's not literally exactly <laughs> what they said, but... Uh, you know, kind of like you can drift, and the best way to drift is to just slam the e-brake. I'm like, well, I mean, no, you, you tune the car, you put specific tires on, you do, but none of those options are in the game. Uh, you cannot tune the cars, uh, you do not upgrade the cars, uh, you don't change the, the 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 lone visual styling you have is that paint job, that one club paint job, um, and it's crazy to me that that's what this game is. It seems like it doesn't really know what it wants to be. It seems like it's trying to straddle the line, you know, between sim and again, not quite arcadey, but I just I don't know. Like what they're it's trying going to make it for. softer than a sim, but also, you know, it's like if you look at kind of Gran Turismo, you know, it has done more of this, and it's something that that Forts has been pretty good about for a while now, is offering different levels of assistance, and that's stuff like you know, okay, you can tune the AI. You know, you can set the AI to easy. You can turn off your ABS. You can turn on traction control. You know, there's like different things that are going to um, make the experience a lot more accessible. It's not necessarily about making it arcadey. It's about making it, you could pick up and play this. It's not, it's not super loose, like slide around corners, like Ridge Racer or anything like that. But you could absolutely, um, you could actually absolutely pick up and play this game, even if you don't know anything about real life racing and all that sort of stuff. It's not just like the the simulation racing games of your, where you just pick up a controller or a steering wheel, hit the brake, it spins out, you don't know why, and you're like, this isn't fun at all. Right. Like right. you know, they've found a way to preserve that end of the experience for people uh, that want that level of depth while still offering something that that pulls it back a little bit for people uh, and ends up being appealing to a wide array of people. 
Whereas with this, it seems like they just, at some point, chose a point and said, all right, this is what the game's going to be. And you have no settings for AI. The AI is really like rigid and sticks to a line. Uh, it, it, it seems almost magnetized to a driving line at points where it'll run you off the road seemingly out of you know, nowhere. Um, it doesn't have a rewind functionality, which I don't know that every game needs to have, but right. after I've been racing for a handful of minutes and to like have the last turn have like an AI car just to decide all of a sudden that it's going to put me into a wall because I happen to be driving on the line that it's trying to drive on, uh, that's not fun. And then you're just screwed at the end. And, yeah, and yeah. then you're like, oh, well, I was in first, and now I'm in last. Great, I guess I get to do this whole thing all over again. Hmm. Um, they have wheel support in there. I haven't seen it with a wheel. Um, the, the number of wheels that support uh, PlayStation 4 at this point is, is pretty small. Yeah. Um, they have KERS and DRS, which are uh, things that F1 cars have. Like, uh, it's, a, it's an energy boost. It's like a turbo boost, like, like Mario Kart or something. It's a, it's a real-life thing that really exists. And, and they've devoted, it's, it's kind of crazy, I don't know, like I assume at some point, you know, they, they have an aggressive DLC plan for this game, so they'll probably get to a point where they've got more of this, but there's exactly one car in the game uh, that has th that. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's, that's sort of weird. Uh, when you're sitting up an event, up an event um, these are your options. Uh, the game seems, you know, like really big on time of day. Uh, they let you kind of set it okay. where you want it. And then time compression lets you change how quickly time passes. So if you want to see the sun set during a race, you can do that. That's specific. That's, I've never seen that in a racing game before. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it, it's kind of cool. Like the, the lighting in this game, I think, is really well done. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the, the nice things about it is, is that it's, it's, uh, it's, it looks pretty good. Um, so if we go all the way to the end here, I have not unlocked it, but... Uh, this is the one car that has Curse and DRS, uh, which I guess in real life it actually does as well. This McLaren is, is going to hit the streets with these kind of F1 things on it, which is super crazy. How is that legal or safe? Well, yeah, I mean, it's so. I mean, it's just a little speed boost. It's it's basically like uh, if if Drew were here, he could explain <laughs> it. But it's something like where the energy lost during you know, braking is converted into energy for this acceleration booster. So it's not necessarily like illegal or unsafe. It's it's you know any anything is you know a so, gas pedal can technically be used to break the law. You don't need that. So uh, and and DRS is that wing in the back. You can retract and, and pull it out. So they have buttons devoted to that. Weirdly enough, like it's the X button for Curs, which I guess is fine for a turbo boost button. Yeah. But when you've got one car in the entire game that uses it, for that to be the default's kind of nuts. And that's neither here nor there. I don't know. Like that that doesn't really matter. It's just a really weird thing. So it's just a, it's a temporary. Speed, it's like a mushroom in Mario Kart. Sure, something like that. And that's a real thing that happens in real cars in 2014. Yeah. That doesn't make any damn sense. Well, I, my under I believe, again, I could be fucking completely wrong here, <laughs> but I think what it is is they've added an electric mo uh, electric uh, setup to a gas-powered engine so you can kick in that electric. Why wouldn't you just turn that on, the whole like leave that switch up, and then just go super fast the whole race? Well, because like you're, uh, you're driving it on the street. In, in F1, they limit the number of seconds you can use it in a race. Huh. Which it makes F1 sound like a video game, and, and that sounds almost awesome. But then it's still F1, so I'm, I'm not actually interested. But <laughs> uh, let's get out there in something a little faster, I guess, and see how I do. I'll probably bang around the turns a little more, because you know, in, in the tour, you, you spend a lot more time in the, the hot hatches. <laughs> Damn it. Is there a currency like for buying cars? No. Or no. How, how are no. you getting that? No. You unlock cars in a set order. OK. Uh, when you hit levels, uh, there are cars that, uh, so there are two levels. You have your personal level, and that's you see here, driver level 23, 25, 27, right. 29. But then you see here, uh, this car is unlocked at club level 15. Uh, okay. So you join a club uh, of like-minded individuals. And of can, real players. Of real players. Okay. And you can, when you create a club, you can set a club to be open for anyone to just join, or you can make it private so people have to request an invite or, or whatever. Uh, and then when you're in a club, uh, the points you earn, the fame you earn in, during races... Uh, goes into leveling that stuff up. Okay. So, let's see here. So, have you just joined like a random club or whatever? One. I, I created okay. one and a handful of other players joined it. So. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. You got in that car. Yeah, you watched it happen. You saw your own hand. Yep. 
Never see that before. Do you think that these social things will be cool once it's out? I know it's kind of hard to tell a lot of times pre-release. You know, uh, so I, I think the... Did you ever play Game Room? Yes. You know you could send challenges with your score? I like the fact. that. Yeah, like Zen Pinball did the same type of thing yeah. where it's like, hey, beat this. Yeah. Well, it, it, so it, it's, it's basically, you can do that. You can create a challenge with a time limit on it. Like, over the next six hours, who can get the fastest score here? Okay. Um, and that's exactly what this is. And... That stuff's cool. Like it, it, it's kind of, it's one step beyond, uh, you know, the, the leaderboard stuff in a game like Forza Horizon Two and stuff like that, which is kind of always popping up like different leaderboards for you know how many billboards you've smashed and, yeah, and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So it's a little bit beyond that. And also you have these face-offs. So here's a cornering face-off, and this is a little more. So you see, uh, it'll pop up this line. If you, as long as you're driving on the line, you're getting points. So you want to get more points than the other guy. Uh, by the time you hit the, the end of the face-off, which I just did. So I get 500 additional fame for doing so. Huh. And here's a drift one, which for kicking out a little bit, as long as I got one wheel on the track, it'll still do that. It'll still give me some points here. And presumably that will be against friends once this is out, right? Well, uh, I mean, yeah. I've seen some people from my club show up here. I've seen random names show up there. It's been kind of all over the place. I don't know what it's biased in favor of. Right. Uh, but, but, yeah. I feel like that's the thing that a lot of racing games have been trying to do lately is is incorporate you know a bunch of social stuff like what was the the Need for Speed where you could like call the helicopters to drop uh, spike strips and stuff. Yeah, that was and that was like a, a tablet. You could use an iPad to do that. No, no, I'm, I mean the one I'm trying to remember what the social elements were. Uh, was it Hot Pursuit? I want to say where you could shoot EMPs and things like that. Yeah, yeah. There's been a few Need for Speeds that have that. Right. What did they call it? They had some crazy system like a, a social deal. God damn. Uh, in, in Rivals, it had the, the tablet that you could... I'm thinking of the one before that, but yeah, I, yeah. I can't quite remember. Most Wanted was the one that's, before that's that. That's the one, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, I, I think it's, it's smart to incorporate leaderboards and stuff like that into your game. It, it makes perfect sense. So I beat the target there uh, that I was going for on the leaderboard. And since this is just a, a time trial, like it just throws up ghosts and gives me a new target based on the leaderboards. And shows me my ghost, and then we just kind of keep racing forever. And you can kind of watch the sun come up and, and go down and stuff. I, I think the the time of day stuff is really well done, and, and I think it does look nice. Um, though, like at dusk, I found it just really hard to see. Oh, okay. Um, it was one of those things where it's like, well, if, I, if I'm trying to race seriously and, and be these leaderboard times, like, of course, I'm going to set noon yeah. and, like, times one and... And just go for it. Does it uh, go overboard way. with uh, like lens flare or anything like that? No, not, not too much. You'll see uh, light reflecting off the cars and okay. stuff like that. Um, and you okay. see, you know, very reflective hood. How about like weather effects and things like that? Uh, it's got cloudy and stuff like that. Like it, it doesn't. That, that seemed to be one of the things they were touting, and and I don't know if they're adding that to the game later or what. But there's there's no real rain or anything like that. Uh, you see some particle effects when you're rounding some corners. Confetti shoots out, but okay. that's that's kind of the the bulk of it. You got your cockpit view. That's pretty good. Uh, or are they touting any kind of like crazy level of realism, like Gran Turismo? You know, they freak out about all that stuff. Like, oh, uh, the leather has to look just like the leather in this Audi. I mean, I, I think you know they're saying that like, oh, we you know we painstakingly recorded cars. Okay. audio and stuff like that like you know, I, I think they did their due diligence on that I'm, I have not sat in this real car in real life so I can't tell you how accurate this is to the the real thing but right. you know it's a decent looking cockpit does uh, does this ghost stuff ever get distracting like does it ever because it seems like you're getting more and more uh, it's it, I think it'll I don't, I don't think it'll ever be more than three okay um, but uh, I'm not sure you can set the opacity of the ghosts if you want oh cool okay. um, if they're if they are too they're blocking the road a little too much for you. Um, so another like other stuff that this game does that's kind of simmy um, in a in a game that doesn't seem to warrant that stuff is it has corner penalties. Uh, so if I let's see that corner is a little too protected, but let me see if I can. No. Here, this hairpin maybe it'll be. No, for mm -hmm. whatever reason I can't get up there. 
Okay. You're like trying to cut corners, like off the track? Yeah, so if you get off the track and cut a corner a little bit, it'll pop up and say corner penalty and it'll reduce your acceleration for a little while. Oh, really? Uh, extreme collisions, if you are uh, trying to bump your way around the track and crash into another car, or, or if, it, if it deems that that's what you're trying to do, even if you aren't, sometimes it'll pop up and say collision penalty and same deal, it'll reduce your acceleration. And so stuff like that, that's like, well, this isn't a sim, like what... If, if you didn't want people to cut corners, put more fences on the tracks. Like yeah. these, you know, like, it, it's, it's a... I, I, f I found it to be, like, a frustrating thing of, like, just... This game seems incredibly confused about what it's trying to be. Uh, and examples like that, I think, like, that stuff just kind of gets in the way of the fun more than anything else. And, and uh, it's like a track design thing. It's like, well, design the tracks to not allow that. If that's something you, you want to avoid, and then, then avoid it. Uh, Instead of like adding this really weird, you know, it's like sim, simmy kind of penalty stuff. Uh, yeah, so like I just, I just feel very confused by this game. It's just like, what were they trying to make? Like, what, what, what was their goal with this game? Because it just seems all over the place. I mean, for all of its lack of direction, it seems. Are you enjoying it? No. Okay. No, um, I, I'm, I'm really not. It's. Uh, I find the, the handling model and the way that they have built the, the kind of grippy feel to these cars to just be confusing. You know, it's, it's like we're at a point now where games have gotten better at, at modeling the art of driving, the act of driving a car. And so this feels like a weird throwback to when consoles weren't powerful enough to do that or something. And it's like this weird... It, it feels like an old simulation racing game, like before they were very serious about making good console simulators. Okay. Because uh, it's like it, it has some of the trappings of that stuff, but not all the way, and all this track reset stuff, and you know. But at the core of it, the, the driving itself feels bad, and there are just you know, it, and it's one of those things where it's like there there maybe aren't better examples of this sort of stuff on the PlayStation 4. Uh, but if you start to open it up to the PlayStation 3, if you start to open it up to, uh, you know, the Xbox stuff, like, th this game just feels like a game without a country. Like, I, I don't know who this is for. Hmm. Uh, it, it looks nice in spots. Again, like, I, it doesn't... I don't know. I, like, what do you think about the way it looks? It seems like it's been getting a lot of attention from people for... Like, people saying, like, oh, the game's beautiful. And I look at it and go, like, you know, it, this is a nice-looking driving game. Uh, but sometimes I feel like road textures or wall textures and stuff like that look kind of nasty. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks good. I mean, it, it's certainly nothing offensive about the visuals or anything. But, like, you know, I just uh, sat in on that quick look of Forza Horizon, and I wouldn't say it's certainly any better than that. Or and There's nothing particularly wowing about the visuals to me, other than, like, yeah, this looks pretty good. And that looks yeah. like the car I would probably really looks yeah you know? yeah you know the, you'll see some drawing and you know if, if you start to pick it apart you'll, you'll see some scenery kind of pop up maybe not at night time maybe it's a little bit better at hiding that stuff at night or something but uh but you know you'll, you'll see just detail pop in uh as you're as you're getting closer and stuff like that uh and yeah you know i, I think it, i think it is a nice looking game but like i don't i don't know that i would say it's like beautiful enough to overshadow kind of my larger, more fundamental problems with the way it plays, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, Which, I mean, again, if it's not fun to drive the cars, I mean, it doesn't really matter how well social aspects or visuals or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, it's it, like it's a, you know, the, like their their leaderboard stuff is is an interesting upgrade over what's been done in the past. Um, but yeah, at, at some point you have to want to play it, and that's sort of where it breaks down for me. Uh, let's finish this up. Yeah, what, what was and that? Show you so, the, that event so that was, was a, that was a time trial. Trial. So you know, oh, you're it, just it trying to just, get your best lap. Yeah, just trying to do do a, do a, my best lap here. Gotcha. Um, I just wanted to show some of the passage of time stuff. Gotcha. Um, yeah, these accolades that'll level up as you drive, and you know, those are both personal and club level uh, accolades. Uh, you get your leaderboard here. I slot in at number four, which I'll take for now. Um, hmm. So, uh, those are the three types of events. You've got your race, your time trial, and your drift. Okay. But let's uh, look at the challenges real quick and, and some of the... Uh, what, what is this sort of social stuff? So, sort of like the PS4 front end, they've got this, this thing below here that is your feed of events. 
And I'm hoping that eventually, so it, it, these are people that are on my friends list here for the most part, but then there's stuff like some of these, oh guys, that guy's in my club. So, okay, that's why he's there. Um, that Cylon guy? Yeah, and so I created some challenges, I sent some challenges, did some stuff, and okay, these all seem to have to do with me, but you know, I felt like I was seeing stuff in my feed that didn't have anything to do with anyone in, in on my friends list or me or anything like that, and I don't know if it was just like populating that stuff just so I'd find events or something like that, but, right. but that's, you know... That is what it is. I can, I can pop out this little thing here for inviting people to a session and, and playing multiplayer. And you've got these these same notifications pop up here too. Um, so I've got my profile. You can kind of see my level uh, people that are on my friends list, even though the, even though the vast majority of them have not played the game. Okay. Um, I can customize my character. What is that? Okay. Oh, look at that. I didn't hmm. actually did not know that was there. Eight heads. How many bodies? Five bodies. Okay. There's a whole array of, of DX shirts and, you know, all sorts of, you know, NWO stuff you can put on, too. Oh, sure. So, all right. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Great. Um, so you can see my progression in terms of my driver level, some of my favorites and stuff, uh, where I'm at on the overall leaderboard with fame points, and then, you know, the, these accolades for, uh, you know, participating in events or drifting hella times or, you know, <laughs> uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, how many miles I've driven in different cars seem to end up in Audis a lot and Bentleys a lot, I guess. Hmm. Hey, I'm curious Lotus. how this is going to work with the weird split with PlayStation Plus free version and like like trophies and things like that. I so wonder... what they've done, um, and and I guess so what they've done with trophies actually is they've taken the tour mode, and and <laughs> uh, broken the tour out here as DLC. Uh... Okay. Uh, sort of the, how the, the same way they present DLC is, is how they've presented the tour trophies. Interesting. So if that's really how it goes, if, if that's what the thing they're separating out from the Plus version, which again, I, it's, it's all been confusing. I have not done a ton of research on that aspect of the game uh, because I'm trying to review the product that you will theoretically buy. Um, you know, then you could still get a Platinum trophy from all this other stuff that has nothing to do with the tour. Like these are things you'll get while playing the tour, or you can, but you don't have to. And so you can unlock cars and everything without the yeah, tour. Yeah, the, the cars have nothing to do with the tour. It's all based on your driver level. Huh. Um, and, and so I'm level 22, so I have all the cars up to level 22. I'm in a club that's like level 10, so there are cars that I have that are unlocked are along the way there too. So if we go into club, um, you see the, the members of the club. Uh, you know, you can kind of see friends, clubs, and that sort of stuff. The newest clubs that have been created, and you know, it'll suggest some clubs to you. And apparently, I've been invited to some clubs. I guess. Fun, fun extreme. extreme. That sounds pretty. That fun. does sound pretty. It's got fun. a flaming eight ball. Yeah. Uh, your club does not activate until you have two members. Okay. So you cannot have a one-person club. Gotcha. Um, and so the, the club has just just like the the solo stuff. There's a whole progression of events here too that. You know, it's the it's kind of the same stuff, but the numbers are way higher because theoretically you have a ton of players contributing to these numbers. Right. Um, and then those all feed into the challenge system. So, uh, when I basically was, let's just go into overall just challenges here. Uh, we can create a challenge. So, when you go create a challenge, it actually pulls your event history uh, for your recent. Uh, you know your, your recent performances. So that's this is that race that we just did, the, okay. that time trial. So we take that, we can create a duration for the the challenge up to a. Uh, oh, I guess actually okay. Okay, so it can be a week, it can be thirty minutes. Let's do two days. Okay. So if people end up with a copy of Drive Club and want to partake in this challenge. Well, th th actually, they wouldn't be able to right off the bat because this is... You can send challenges. You can receive challenges for cars you haven't unlocked yet. And you'll just button into them and it'll be like, that car's locked. And you'll be like, well, thanks. <laughs> um, we can go to our friends list or our club members. Let's just invite everyone in our club. Brad joined my club to make it active even though he's never going to play this game. <laughs> uh, but we'll send it to him anyway and that'll cause a game alert. This is the first game actually to use the uh, the notification system uh, for game alerts 
Oh, weird. Yeah, I've never go gone out of there. Yeah, so you'll get, uh, you know, th that'll be like, you got challenged, basically. Hmm. Um, we can send that. That will hassle everyone that I sent it to. Great. But also, it's an open challenge. So if anyone happens upon it in, you know, the various list of challenges, or they, they look at my profile or whatever, they can jump in and join it. Um, you can set it to closed if you like. Uh, as well to, to limit it to just the people you're inviting if you, if you want to go that route too. So we get up with these community challenges, which is these, this is just, you know, a bunch of open challenges. And you can kind of go in here and go, well, let's do this drift challenge. All right, uh, solo drift challenge in the BMW, 10 a.m. And so uh, you end up with solo challenges and you end up with club challenges. The difference uh, being that in a club challenge, only the fastest or best score from your club is counted on the leaderboard. Okay. So if you can, I think you know multiple, you know multiple people from your club chipping away at it, but only the best score goes in. Okay. Uh, whereas a solo challenge is based on your specific performance. Um, Does the leader of the club get any kind of perks or no, uh, no? No. Okay. I can just I can well I can change the club paint job. <laughs> okay. That's my perk. Gotcha. Uh, so this is a drift event. In the drift event, you have drift zones and speed zones. Uh, you want to go fast through the speed zones, and you want to drift through the drift zones. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I've had, like, kind of questionable luck with my drifting. But this speed zone, this straight shot here, I can, <laughs> I can do that pretty well. Whoa. And that's the end. Uh, oh. A lot of the drift events are very short. Uh, not all of them. Some of them are longer, but, you know, it's, it's a handful of turns. And uh, one of the nice things about this game is that the restarts are quite fast. That's good. That's important. Um, you know, I, like I feel like they could go a little bit further and have it be like, hold down the touchpad to auto restart this event, or, or something like that. Instead of you know, instead I have to kind of go in here and hit restart. But when I hit it, I'm right back oh, up. No reload or anything. Yeah. Okay. I, and uh, the the races, if you if you get halfway through a race and go, man, I really just got put into that wall. I guess I should probably just start over. Um, then you can do that, and it won't restart that quickly, but it restarts pretty quickly. So that that's terrible. What just happened there to me, that was terrible. What I just did was terrible. Yes, yeah, not good driving. Club's going to be upset with you. No, yeah, they're they're furious. Yeah, actually, I think Brad's texting you right now. Yeah, he's, he's just like, I want out of this club. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> but if you think I'm going to go shard hunting for you ever again, <laughs> no deal. <laughs> So that's a ghost driving the wrong way, yeah, right. attempting to get more drift points out of a drift zone. The game kind of resets the cars if you do that, so I don't think you can actually do that to cheat. Okay. But uh, maybe that's actually possible. I don't know. <laughs> I wonder, I don't think I've ever seen a racing game that has like a restart as yeah, quick as terrible. like, you know, a game like Trials or Joe Danger or something. Yeah, where it's literally like, like Tony Hawk or, or something that's just like, yeah, or, or I guess Tony Hawk's not a button, but... <laughs> Tony Hawk was always like, start, start down, down, X, start down, and then, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. you're right back in it. Um, so, well, the Undertaker beat you, of course. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, he's undefeated uh, at Drive Club. That's in, all he's doing. Drive Club. He's starting yeah. a new streak. Yeah, <laughs> the streak starts here, fifty-five and zero. Um, so, I uh, that uh, that enters my not not particularly great drift score on the leaderboard for this uh, challenge. And you can see the number of people that have participated in the challenge and the number of overall attempts. The more people that participate, the the higher of a fame bonus you can get out of it. Uh, for doing well, um, and yeah, so that that's kind of how the challenge system works. Uh, mm -hmm. You can you can challenge people to stuff and and set the time and and, and go at it. Uh, you can always find other challenges uh, on this this list of challenges, or you can look for your friends' challenges and do that sort of stuff, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's that's pretty much the bulk of Drive Club. It also has a uh, a proper multiplayer mode. I don't know. Let's let's give it a look. But th this is the day before the game's out yet, so it, we we might not actually be able to get into a match. But we'll at least be able to see how you join events, which I think is a little weird. Um. So it'll pull these six different events, and they'll all have countdown timers on them. Uh, countdowns until like the lobby opens up for registration or something like that. And it's. Huh. We'll join this first one here. We'll register for this event. And it'll say, okay, so lobby opens. And I don't know 
like I, I don't know why they have the list of events at some point because you know it'll it'll create and then it'll it'll actually probably fail here. Uh, okay, no, it's actually okay. We'll actually get in. Okay, great. Um, but it seems like you get into this lobby and then the next event isn't just this event again or even this type of event again. It's just like it seems like it's whatever's next on its constantly rolling list. Okay, it just feeds you into that. So at some point, I don't know why it presents you with six options instead of just like hitting the button and playing multiplayer. Just like let me let me drive cars. Like it yeah, seems like you're gonna get thrown into something anyway. Yeah, it just seems like it should have a button marked "Let's drive" or something. Um, but yeah, so hmm. it seems like when you were racing, there was no music. Is that something you turned off, or is there no? In-game? No, by default, the music is turned off. You can actually turn up the music in races, but I think it's just this. Maybe it's just this menu music again. You know. Uh, huh. I'm gonna go with this CTR3. Looks pretty sharp. Let's put the club paint job on it. We got these other options here, but the old double zero. I set that number. Me. Mm. Looks like everyone is going with the same car. So great. <laughs> yeah, good. This all looks good. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it looks nice. It's. I think the the lighting is the thing that I, I feel is like kind of the, the standout thing. I, I do notice some little jaggies here and there on you know. Oh sure sure. Certain things. There's that confetti I was talking about. I like that. I like that. You know my favorite thing like that is an SSX when you would land a trick and poof, like all the fireworks yeah, and stuff yeah, would go yeah. off. That made me happy every single time. It just—it seems like there are some good ideas going on in this game. Yes, uh, yeah, I feel like the challenge system is well crafted, um, and I guess that's kind of the good idea of this game. Um, but <laughs> at some point, like it, it comes down to if I'm going to play a, a game involving racing cars, this is not the one I'm going to play. Right. Uh, I would at this point, I would play Forza Horizon Two. Um, or if I was looking for arcadey stuff, I you know like maybe the crew will be good. I don't actually know for sure. That's kind of the only other option this year. Right. And I feel like last year's Need for Speed was pretty disappointing. Um, Rivals. Yeah. Yeah, I never got too into that. They tried to make the Dark Souls of driving games and <laughs> and got really close. It's fun. I mean, like the actual races and the driving. I feel is. More fun than yeah, what this looks it's, like. It's the stuff where, like, the the problem with Rivals was like it's multiplayer stuff. Like, it didn't bring players together well enough. So you would all be in the world and never see each other. Yeah, you'd look at the map and you'd see like six other people. Yeah, and you're like, well, around. I guess I could go over there and screw with that guy, but I guess why? Yeah, I, I did like the actual driving though. I thought that felt pretty good. But yeah, here's this guy kind of put me out, but I held on. What? Uh, okay. That man became a ghost. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, you put humans on the track with you, and suddenly it's just bumper cars. It's <laughs> it's like every other racing game in that respect, at least. Is your club a serious one? Like a very respectful, very serious club, or are you guys uh, rebels? Uh, well, so one of the, the types of paint jobs... is I believe it is literally called rebel paint jobs. Oh, so really? <laughs> Maybe we should go in and look at those. Uh, so you see it is now nighttime all of a sudden. Okay. Mid-race. Also, I feel like some of these like face-offs, like you get the drift face-off, the average speed face-off, and the cornering face-offs and stuff like that. Like, sometimes they seem counterintuitive to what you're actually trying to do. Like, I'm trying to win this race. Don't say, like, hey, man, you should drift here. He's yeah. like, no, I'm trying to win the damn race. Leave me alone. I mean, can you just straight up turn those off? Uh, hmm. Or if you played, you know, when offline? You, would it? Well, yeah, so if you play offline, it all goes away. Hmm. Um, but then, in that case, you're kind of losing one of the few things that yeah. makes this game unique. <laughs> um, and you can't race online without racing online, you know. Right, obviously. <laughs> um. And maybe that more speaks to just like, I'm not the world's best drifter. 
So maybe, you know, if you were, then you would be actually, it would benefit you to be drifting through those turns and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I'm, I'm finding that with the grippy nature of the cars, like, that you're, it's not necessary to drift a lot of the time. Hmm. And it just, it all seems kind of soulless, I guess. Yeah, you know, it, it is, it's, uh, it's pretty flat. Um, you know, it seems like they overly, overly relied on the social stuff to try to give it an identity. And I don't think it goes far enough to, yeah. to achieving that. Um, the stuff that pops up on track, I think, is like, it's a cool idea. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's not enough. And, uh, but again, like, to me, all of this kind of boils down to, I just don't think that these cars are fun to drive in this game. With the way that they have modeled the handling and all that sort of stuff, it's just, it's not for me at all. Like, I, I just, I'm, I'm getting nothing out of it. So, it's cool that they built this challenge system, and, and I think that's like a, it's, it's a good spin on leaderboards in games, and, and games should, should do more stuff like this. But, the core of it's not there. Uh, and, and that's that's my my main issue with it is the is the, the the core of it's just not there. So turns out that's important. Yeah. So that's Drive Club. Uh, I'm gonna back out of. Well, wait. Why would I lose fame if I'm we finish the race? Right. I'm, I better not lose that fame. I don't know. Weird. Um. Yeah. So that's Drive Club. Hmm. Yeah, that sure was drive that, club. That, that, yes, that's that maybe is an appropriate. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, if you only have a PlayStation Four, you know you don't have a ton of other options, and, and hopefully with the free offering of whatever the PlayStation Plus offering is, assuming that still <laughs> exists. I, again, I, I'm not too clear on that on that stuff, but you know, you, for free it's fine. But again, like you know, the, there are not a ton of other options for games that approach a level of simulation on the PlayStation 4 right now, so kind of in, until Gran Turismo takes the next nine years or whatever to make another game, um, you don't really have a lot of other stuff to choose from right now, so mm. um, you know, maybe Drive Club will satisfy, based on, on that alone, just satisfied by default, I guess, but uh, it's hard to imagine this game being competitive with uh, the the best simulation or the best arcade game uh, racing games out there. So right, yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.